Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk about Sunderland, and the probability of it to be the cradle of civilizations. I will begin with the geographical conditions, to be continued with the existing human being migration hypotheses, then the recorded memories and ended with the conclusions. I am not going to make a theory about it, but I just collect data, look for their compatibility and measure their probabilities. I use probabilistic instead of constructive method in this case. I also use a potsherd model. In the model, various compatibilities analogous to sherds are reassembled to form the pattern of the population dispersal, or the pot. Missing sherds causes holes on the pot are filled in with hypotheses, in which each hole is connected to the surrounding sherds. What is Sunderland? A vast southeastern part of the Asian continental shelf was exposed during the last glacial period, geologically named as the Sunderland. The last glacial period, or popularly known as the Ice Age, was the most recent glacial period within the current Ice Age, occurring during the last years of the Pleistocene geological era, from approximately 110,000 to 12,000 years ago. The Sunderland included the Malay Peninsula on the Asian mainland, as well as the large islands of Kalimantan, Java, and Sumatra and their surrounding islands. Sunderland is a biogeographical region of southeastern Asia which encompasses the Sunda Shelf, the part of the Asian continental shelf that was exposed during the last Ice Age. In the last glacial maximum approximately 21,000 years ago, the sea level was the lowest at about 120 meters or 400 feet below today. It included the Malay Peninsula on the Asian mainland, as well as the large islands of Kalimantan, Java, and Sumatra and their surrounding islands. The eastern boundary of Sundalan is the Wallace Line as the eastern boundary of the range of Asia's land mammal fauna, and thus the boundary of the echo zones. Vegetations in Sunderland during the last glacial maximum consist of tropical rainforests, monsoon or dry forests, tropical woodlands, tropical grassland and montane tropical forest. On this slide I'm showing you the distribution of rock paintings in Southeast Asia. Most of these paintings are estimated more than 10,000 years old. Only one place that have been carbon dated, that is in South Sulawesi, to about 40,000 years old. Some of the paintings depict boats, as shown on this slide. These suggest that they already had the technology from the very ancient time. The ones in Moros were carbon dated to about 40,000 years old. On this slide I'm going to show you the mainstream hypothesis about the human being migration, that is the out of Africa hypothesis, especially the southern or coastal route to reach Sunderland. This hypothesis depends a lot on the genetic studies, combined with the fossil, archaeological and climatic data as shown on this slide. In this hypothesis, our modern species was originated in East Africa by 195,000 to 160,000 years ago. Most versions of the Southern Dispersal Hypothesis suggests that modern humans with a generalized subsistence strategy based on hunting and gathering coastal resources left Africa between 130,000 and 70,000 years ago, and traveled along the coasts of Arabia, India, and Sunderland, arriving in Australia by 40,000 to 50,000 years ago. Kadyao Cave Man was dated to 67,000 years old, Tabong Cave 47, Maya Cave 40, Muros Cave 40, GB 33, Gunan Cave 80, Gunan Padang, 25, Kota Tampan 31, and Hohabine 38. I'm showing to the ancient Mount Daba, where its mega eruption 74,000 years ago had multiple effects on the biosphere. It has been linked to a genetic bottleneck in human evolution, which may have resulted from a severe reduction in the size of the total human population due to the effects of the eruption on the global climate.
Next is a hypothesis about the Austronesian expansion, the out of Taiwan model. This model is based on combined evidence of archaeology and linguistics. That dispersal and expansion of this population from South China through Taiwan to Oceania from 6,000 to 700 years ago due to population pressures from an agricultural economy is the general idea for this model. A competing model, which is now still developing, is the out of Sunderland model. It argues that the origin of the Austronesian speakers is in the islands of Southeast Asia based on mitochondrial studies that show high levels of genetic diversity. Ideal climatic conditions and natural resources for development were found in Sunderland. After immigrating from the semi-deserted savannas of Africa, man first found a place where food was abundant and it was there that they invented farming, agriculture, trading and civilization, which made humanity first flourished. A striking thing that can be observed in this model is the dispersal of population to the other part of the world about 11,000 years ago. An unusual event was happened here. The event is detected from the observation data. A very clear indication is from the Greenland ice layers. As shown on this slide, the change of the world temperature made the ice on the North Pole to melt and the sea level continued to rise. Cracks in the Earth's crust as the weight of the ice shifted to the seas could set off catastrophic events. The Younger Dryas period is one of the most well-known examples of such abrupt change. As we can see from this graph, there were sudden changes of temperature. The most significant one is at the end of the Younger Dryas period. The ending time of the Younger Dryas period corresponds to the beginning of the Holocene period which extends to the present time. In archaeology, the end of Younger Dryas is also the end of Paleolithic and the beginning of Neolithic ages. The Neolithic encompasses the growth and impacts of the human species worldwide including all its written history, development of major civilizations, and overall significant transition toward urban living in the present. The phenomena is also detected from observation data in the other places on Earth. On the left graph are observations at Carriaco in Venezuela, in the Antarctic, and the Laurentide meltwater flux in North America. On the right graph are the changing of carbon dioxide and methane gases contents observed in the West Antarctic ice sheet. A study by Carmen et al. in 2015 shows a graph of the Y chromosome distribution against time. As we can see from this graph, there was a sharp decline of population began at the end of Younger Dryas. We can see also a striking thing here, it seems that there was a population shift from Southeast and South Asia to Europe, Near East, and Caucasus. We can see that the population of the Andes also began after the Younger Dryas period. The end of Younger Dryas was also marked by the emergence of civilizations around the world, among others observed at these places. Construction of Gobkli Teep Jericho Settlement Katloyuk Settlement A Neolithic Village in Cyprus Imspiri Settlement Middle Eastern Neolithic Bee Culture Platokens in Mesopotamia Large-scale agriculture in Levant region Agriculture and Indus Valley Rice in China Maize in Mexico Jaman Period in Japan Nanzwanta culture in South China Falsen culture Clovis culture Pottery, tools, arrowheads in Hamilton County A poop in Oregon Na in Hoya Negro Cave in Mexico An iron mine in Taltal Monte Verde site Pyramid form of Gunung Padang Polynesians ceased contact with the Southeast Asians Extinction of Homo floresiensis All of these emerged at almost the same time, as shown on this map.
the event is probably also documented by the people memories around the world. The first one is the stories of great fun and the repopulation of man. The overwhelming consistency among these legends and myths found in distant parts of the earth indicates they were derived from a common origin. The common elements in the stories are, flood hero, warning of the coming flood, construction of a boat in advance, storage of seeds and animals, inclusion of family, release of birds or other animals to determine if the water level had subsided, similar to the Noah's Ark story. The names in yellow color are the flood heroes. Eridu Genesis Zayu Sutra, Sumerian Epic of Atrasis Atrasis, Akkadian Epic of Gilgamesh Atnapishtim, Akkadian Book of Kalburn Sasuda, Egyptian Babylon Iakaza Sutras, Greek Book of Genesis Noah, Hebrew Quran New, Muslim Metamorphoses Deucalion, Roman Fabuli Deucalion, Spain Roman Bibliotheca Deucalion, Greek Myth of the Lithuanians Manuel Vedas Manu, Indian Myth of the Ching Pan and Chong, Tibetoberman Myth of the Buddhics, Indonesian Thyaks Panacharan Bunyu, Indonesian Myth of the Hawaiians New U. Myth of the Satu Kanyan, North American Myth of the Mayan, Mesoamerican Myth of the Tlapanks and Huaxtecs, Mesoamerican Myth of the Aztecs and Totonacs, Mesoamerican The other documented memories are about the paradise, with different names for each civilization. The names are in yellow. Eridu Genesis Delman, Akkadian. Myth of Anlil and Ninlil Nippur, Sumerian. Epic of Gilgamesh Nisir, Akkadian. Book of Dead Nazirsir, Egyptian. Myth of Tanetjer, Pant, Egyptian. Book of Genesis, Book of Ezekiel Garden of Eden, Hebrew. Books of Kings and Chronicles of Fur, Hebrew. Shanamay, Bandahis, Pahava Vikang Des, Iranian. Quran Jana, Ferdaz, and Eschatology by the Muslims. Papal Butolin and Sawan, Mesoamerican. All of these myths mention that they were located in the Far East, and the one in Mesoamerica mentions that it was located in the other side of the sea. I made a hypothesis about the Garden of Eden two years ago, that is in southern Kalimantan. I have found at least ten compatibilities. This is my theory about Atlantis, developed from about seven years ago. The only surviving source of information about Atlantis is from the Plato's text, about 360 BC. I have made a serious effort to match Plato's narrative with the location for Atlantis, namely off the southern coast of the island of Kalimantan in the Java Sea. I also analyze Plato's many references to the Atlantis capital and its extensive plain. I draws attention to the remarkable water transportation and irrigation system in southern Kalimantan.
It is told that the destruction of Atlantis is about 11,600 years ago, an exact coincidence with the end of Young Adrias. I have found at least 60 compatibilities. The Kumari Kandam refers to a hypothetical lost continent with an ancient Tamil civilization. As mentioned in the legend, Kumari Kandam is a vast land divided into 49 territories. There was a mountain range with 48 high peaks, four rivers originated from Mount Malai, canals excavated to irrigate the valley and ruby and gold mining. Kumari Kandam is connected with the story of Pandya Kingdom and discussed explicitly the Ketakahal, meaning seizure by ocean, probably the sea water rise. The kingdom and the population then moved to southern India from the south. The kings established Sangams, or literary academies, at about 11,000 to 12,000 years ago, which exactly the end of Younger Dryas period. These descriptions are compatible to the story of Garden of Eden and Atlantis and probably in the same place that is in southern Kalimantan. I have found at least eight compatibilities. The Kang Bez is a mythical, paradise-like fortress in Iranian folklore. It is told that it was located in the extreme far east, in an ocean, where it needed a year or six-month voyage from Iran, and situated around the equator. There was no snow and there were two seasons. The location was outside China and east of India. There were many rivers, waters and mountains, and a row of volcanoes. The description of the fortress is almost similar with Atlantis. I have found at least nine compatibilities. The Epic of Gilgamesh is an ancient Mesopotamian odyssey recorded on clay tablets in the Akkadian language about Gilgamesh, the king of the Mesopotamian Satistate rock. It is mentioned on the tablets that there was a cedar forest full of noisy birds and cicadas, monkeys scream and yell in the trees. There was a mythological country of Nisra located in the far east where the sun rises. It is told that there was a great flood parallel with the book of Genesis. These descriptions are also compatible with the island of Kalimantan. Similar stories are found in the Sumerian Eridu Genesi, the Akkadian Epic of Atresis and the Egyptian Book of Culburn. I have found at least four compatibilities. The land of Punt was a trading partner of Egypt. The Egyptians also called it as Tanetjer, literally translated as the land of the gods, the land of the ancestors, the divine land, the holy land or the land of origin. It was located in the east, in the direction of sunrise, and the abode of Ra, sun god. It was known for producing and exporting gold, incense, aromatic resins, ebony, ivory, tortoise shells and wild animals. With so many pictorial and inscriptive description of the land, I made a hypothesis about it location two years ago and have found at least 34 compatibilities with a location in Sumatra. Similar descriptions are also found in the Hebrew land of Afur. The Te Prabana was a historical name for an island in the Indian Ocean. It is probably the Hellenistic effort to find Atlantis or Paradise from about 300 BC. It is described as located in the Eastern Sea, lies extended opposite to Greater India, and embraced on both sides of the equator. The coordinates of the location can't be checked, probably they kept the discovery into secrecy. The island is 1,300 kilometers in length and 925 kilometers in breadth, and surrounded by shallow seas with coral reefs. The land was fertile, 
It had abundant of fruits, rich of pearls and precious stones, and there are elephants, tigers and turtles. With numerous names of places, rivers, harbors, islands and mountains described by Ptolemy, I have made a hypothesis that Te Prabana is actually the island of Kalimantan, where I have found at least 63 compatibilities. Studies of blowgun or blowpipe distribution by Jet in 1970 and 1991 show that the peoples of Southeast Asia and the Americas had connections in the ancient times, before Columbus discovered the continent. That this Persian time was not studied but it was before the Austronesian expansion from Taiwan because it is not found in Taiwan and almost none in the Pacific Islands. The distribution of backstrap loom, coconut, bar cloth, paper, slit drum etc. also have similar pattern. This is about the pyramid building. The construction of stone pyramids was based on native belief that mountains and other high places are the abode of the spirits of the ancestors, or the most ideal pilgrimage places to worship them. The simplest form of pyramid is the earth and stone step pyramids in which it is normally built on natural or man-made mounds, hills or hillsides. Usually there is a shrine and or an altar at the top. As the civilizations were developing, they built larger pyramids so that more stones were required. The majority of the weight are closer to the ground and material higher up on the pyramid will be pushing down from above. The stones could pose problems on the strength of the earth to hold the weight. Therefore, pyramids with heavier stone weight pushing on the earth fill are observed to have less earth fill or even without it. This design allowed early civilizations to create stable monumental structures. Dry stones were used in the construction where minimum human work are required. Pyramids have been built by civilizations in many parts of the world. For thousands of years, the largest structures on earth were pyramids. They spread from Egypt to America, that emerged separately from one another by oceans who supposedly never discovered each other's existence. There are no firmly established connections between the different civilizations that built them, but their similarities show that they sprang from a common origin. The construction of stone pyramids was based on the native belief, that mountains and other high places are the abode of the spirits of the ancestors, or the most ideal pilgrimage places to worship them. They feel the need for pilgrimages, in addition to worship, to ask for help in solving the everyday life problems. As well as mentors, stone tables, and stone statues, Austronesian megalithic culture and Musantara features an earth and stone step pyramid structure, referred to as Pundun Berundak. Pundun Berundak is regarded as one of the characteristics of the original culture of the archipelago. These structures have been found and spread throughout New Zantara, as far as Polynesia. Don in Padong is the biggest and the oldest megalithic site in Southeast Asia, dated circa 23,000 BC or older. The Saku and Chathal temples in central Java, where the dates are still debated, show the Austronesian indigenous elements of steppe pyramids, that somewhat resemble Mesoamerican pyramids. The huge Burrow Buddha Temple is the largest Buddhist temple in the world, which allegedly built on the previous step pyramid. In the development, they gave architectural decorations on the pyramids, which varies according to their cultures and beliefs. The shape of the structures then gradually transformed into temples. Pyramid structures have been found and spread throughout Southeast Asia. Most of them are found in the island of Java.
with the bulk of collected archaeological and genetic studies as well as legends, myths and tales, I have made an attempt to reassemble the possible connections of the compatibilities to obtain the pattern of the population dispersal. The Red Stars are the archaeological sites probably related to catastrophes and population dispersal around the Younger Dryas period. The Cyan Triangles are the legends, myths or tales almost similarly documenting memories of their origins. The lines with arrows are the approximate population dispersal around the Younger Dryas period according to genetic studies connected with archaeological evidence, legends, myths and tales. From the legends, myths and tales, Sunderland has many names, among others are Garden of Eden, Paradise, Delman, Nippur, Nisser, Nazirisir, Tanetjer, Land of Pint, Land of Ophir, Atlantis, Kumari Kandam, Pondia, Kangdes, Tolan, and so on, Taprabana, and Golden Kersenese. I'm going to close my presentation with concluding remarks. With the above piling of compatibilities, I conclude to suggest that Sundaland is a strong candidate to trace it as the cradle of civilizations, began from about 80,000 to 50,000 years ago until the massive dispersal at the end of Younger Dryas period. Archaeological evidence are minimal in the region of Sundaland, mainly because the civilization mostly inhabited the lowlands which are now under the sea. The abundance of wood in the region could make them to build more wooden structures rather than stones that would last in short time. Highly volcanic activities in the region also make them to hide deep under the ash. I am glad that studies, mostly genetic, relating to the dispersal from Sundalan keep coming recently. I hope that the archaeological observers of civilization in Sundalan can perform more intensive excavations and studies in the future. I will publish the book, titled Sundaland, Tracing the Cradle of Civilizations, in about the coming two or three months. It will describe items presented here in more details. The number of pages is approximately 400. Thank you.